Okay, so as we already did an introduction, I think we can move on with the participation of the artists. Uh, and the first turn, turn will be Cecil Barba. Hello, uh, my name is Cecil Barba. I'm also from Guadalajara, but I live in Mexico City. Uh, I'm presenting the piece Máquina Organismo, that is the one that is in, on the stairs and on the gallery. Um, and what I have to say about it is that um, in my work, I have always been interested in the tension between the way nature works and the way we humans perceive these natural events, like, like the tension between the loss of nature and human perception. I think I decide to focus in this tension, perhaps in, a, in an attempt, a failed attempt, of understand how is that we have distanced so much from nature to the point of considering it as something apart from us, like, a, like an alien universe that occurs uh, apart from us, like, 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 like is there only designed to satisfy our needs? And, and sometimes I need like to, to find ways to, to reconnect uh, the two worlds. So in pieces like this, um, what I try is to find or rather to create a relationship between things made by nature and human-made objects. I work mainly with found materials, and for this I take long walks on the city and on the nature that surrounds the city, always staring at the ground, trying to find elements that call my attention and that can be part of this ephemeral system. Um, all, the, all the elements that are, uh, that are in this piece were found in Oklahoma. I take uh, walks in the city and then I went to the Martin Park. And I like it to see it like that, like a, like a big puzzle or a big fold that, that for a brief and utopical moment, uh, per, uh, like, can reconcile both worlds, no? Can, can suddenly become one single being uh, where, where human-made objects and nature can have a dialogue or a relationship or a way to coexist. Um, I think that's it. Okay, thank you very much. So don't forget that one of your pieces is in the gallery, at the gallery, but also in the stairways. So when you go up and down, you, you can see the rest of the work and how it comes in and in between the gaps and everything Cecil just told us. And the next turn is Jorge Mendez Blake. Hello, I'm Jorge. Um, I have uh, two different works in the exhibition. The first one on the left, uh, it, um, it's an intervention I did originally for a Luis Barragan house in Guadalajara. Luis Barragan, Luis Barragan is an architect from the city uh, that has, a, has had a strong presence in the history of architecture in, 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 in Mexico. Um, and the intervention I did was to uh, take as point of departure the, the original floor of the house, which has this um, particular uh, checkboard drawing in the, in the, in with, with, with brown and, and pink colors. And then I, I, I pass this um, element to the, all the walls and, and um, ceiling in the house. And the, the, from there, I also did drawings and, and paintings. And in this case, here in the, for the exhibition, the, the, uh, we did the, the wall painting as a separate element, and then we, uh, we are showing also the, the, the group of drawings. 
And uh, also I have um, this other piece uh, based in two, two elements. One, one, one element is the, the bricks that they are uh, always getting in the city where they are shown. And the other is a small element, which is a, a, a book page by American writer um, Emily Dickinson. Uh, it says, I took my power in my hand. So in this case, it's um, a small element that um, has this tension with the uh, heaviness and, and apparently uh, uh, structure of the, of the bricks. Thank you very much, Jorge. So we cannot see the, the drawings in this picture, but in the gallery you can also find, as he was saying, the drawings. Alejandro Almanza. Hello, I'm Alejandro. I'm from Mexico City, uh, but uh, I live and work between Mexico City and Guadalajara. Uh, well, my, my work uh, uh, you know, is interested in exploring uh, how we deal with physicality, with materials, uh, with uh, uh, physics laws, and the way uh, architecture uh, makes us how to kind of, uh, deal with the world in a way, no? and how we perceive na nature too. It's funny that uh, us humans, we always kind of, you know, like you're in your living room and you put a you know, I think the living room is the most artificial space in the world. You know, it's like it keeps you safe from the outside. Now, what is the outside? It's nature. So we say no to nature, and we need to have this shelter. You know? it's, it's interesting that in, almost in the United States, everything's made of wood and plywood. You know? And in Mexico, we have everything of brick and mortar you know, and concrete. You know? So it's we we deal with that kind of uh, architecture way different, you know? I remember my sculptor professor is like, oh, you Mexicans always kind of do the concrete, you know? And I've always been doing that, uh, that you know? So uh, maybe it's a little bit difficult to, to read my piece because uh, it's made by rebar and, and concrete. So it's like, it feels like a pillars that, uh, that hear the pillars and it's, they're not made of concrete, they're made of wood or steel, you know? for any kind of like a lamp post or electrical uh, post. No? So uh, the, what I was trying to kind of do with this is like to, to, to do like any engineer, no? like to imitate nature and trying to, 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 to do like a, almost like, like a, these types of uh, cactuses. No? They can grow like almost like 15 feet high. No? They're pretty spectacular. Uh, so, but yeah, of course I failed. It's a failure, no? Because they're pretty badly made. They were, they, were, they were cast by real cactuses. They're still alive. Uh, but in my studio, they are, and now they are different, you know? They grow, and so for me it was interesting to see that and, and to see, well, this is a building in a way because those cactuses, when they break with the wind, they start growing again. So. And it feels like that too in, in city. It's like, a, like organic, you know? They destroy buildings and they create new ones, you know? So, I don't know. Uh, I can go to another places with this piece, but uh, I think it's one of the, I think I, I'm okay with this, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alejandro. And the next turn is Octavio Abundes. Hi, my name is Octavio, I'm from uh, originally, I was born in Monterrey, but then I'm, my parents moved to Guadalajara, and I'm from Guadalajara, uh, in the mind and in the spirit. And um, I studied architecture, but then I turned away from that because I understood there would always be like a client, and I wouldn't, I didn't want to lose that, you know, like freedom in, that is in the arts. And so the painting that's here, the work that's here, is a series that uh, started in 2019. And it's called Histories, with a parenthesis between the H and the I. Uh, because there's no possible uh, total objectivity towards events in history. So all the pieces, all the texts are to be uh, read with that intention that I'm not trying to declare that's the truth. That's just like a version of the truth. And so 
the painting is 256 different color panels, and each with a different text. And it deals with the idea of utopia and the, the history of that concept, where it emerged, how it has been uh, handled politically, economically. And it, focuses, it focused a lot on uh, utopian experiments, mainly in the United States, uh, when pilgrims and other kind of religious protesters came from Europe to America to try to establish new ways of living. And it's also a history of, of all the failures, of the many failures of those communities that were um, destroyed by greed, by laziness, by grasshoppers, you know, sometimes. So <laughs> there's a, a, you know, like plagues and tuberculosis and all that kind of stuff that happens. And, and my, the point of these works um, is to, to get people to consider or to think about that subject that for me it's like the most important thing we should be worrying about, which is where we're, where we're heading now as a global civilization and what steps do we need to take to make it better than we're actually doing it now. So that's the, the work. In the, in the in the in its textual uh, like level, and in the painterly level, uh, this piece is an appropriation of Gerard Richter's uh, paintings. It's called 256 Colors. There are four of those, so I'm also copying four of those paintings. But they are not the same colors. They are very different, and they are different also in the way that they can arrange rearrange. Uh, in, in endless, or almost endless possibilities. So the idea is to have the, the, the picture moving, it can be reframed, it can have holes, someone, something can be missing. So I'd like the, uh, to explore that painting which is not like fixed to a, to a wall or to a rigid set. So this is like the original uh, position and then it can go on to becoming... A painting else. that keeps on changing itself. Yeah, it and that's it. Thank you very much. And the uh, last turn is Daniela Ramirez. Hello. Um, I'm Daniela Ramirez. I'm from Guadalajara as well. Um, I did my studies in arts in Guanajuato, which is a city nearby. Um, but I live in Guadalajara for like six years already. And uh, this painting, I made it specifically for this exhibition but it's part of a series that I have been developing since 2014. And um, what I um, chose to do is like um, building these landscapes out of different species that to me, they speak about history of the city. So I like to relate the specific like history with the rest of like the world, kind of. I mean, um, so there's many specific things that I find really interesting in how we uh, decide to create the city landscape uh, with like plants that are not originally. And uh, I'm interested in like how they get there in in in, in this moment. And um, like I was saying, like Guadalajara, we relate a lot with trees. I we're super proud of our trees. There's like so many flowery trees. And so if you start to wonder, there is like this um, Galeana tree that ha uh, uh, it comes from West Africa and it, it has this, but it's uh, one of the most invasive plants in the world. And now we have it like um, showing off all over the city of Guadalajara and uh, also like the a peacock flower, the tabachin, is like a, a flower that used to uh, serve women for um, like abortion purposes or like the banana trees that they have this uh, like really rough history in all Latin America. So I like thinking uh, or like inventing these um, landscapes um, that are like really colorful and and pretty and stuff, but that if you um, are intrigued like I am, like you might find uh, 
what's behind that. And I also think that through painting, I like representing things, um, he, like I wanna not only like represent, but also like play with the painting as well. Like painting itself is like a, a like an own language. So I really build these paintings with like different layers and with time. And I feel like like painting kind of reveals itself at the end. So yeah, I do the painting, but also like the painting do a lot of the the work. And uh, I think uh, I as an artist, like I enjoy this process of of. Um, being with the materials and the and also like I can I don't have like the last words you know with my paintings like I you make some decisions but at the end it shapes itself so I find that part also yeah I think that's also part of what I do like like a lot of mistakes um, that I battle with but at the end I enjoy and I think yeah like that's um, part and um, also feel like um, like all this colorful palette I appeal more and, and, and like sizes and shapes and I appeal more to the perception of people like I feel like um, these colors can relate with people uh, further than just like a painted plant. You know, like you see things through colors, or at least I work like that. Like color is my language more than drawing and other things. So um, yeah, I always feel like there's something behind the images. So I try to like share with people and, and um, yeah, so far is that and um, so the, okay, so these species specifically are like ones I found in Guadalajara in different gardens or like throughout the city and in like important like uh, colonial spots in Guadalajara. And uh, yes, very much. Thank you, Daniela. So I would like to ask a question for everyone. How does these important cultural figures um, how do they affect your work, or if you have them in mind, or, or, or not at all? For example, in uh, Alejandro Almanza's piece, when Juan Rulfo, it was made uh, for a show around Juan, the personage or the character of Juan Rulfo, and in Jorge Mendes Blake works, we also see the influence or the homage or homage to Barragan, but. To the rest, for example, Cecil, Daniela, and Octavio, do you have in mind uh, at some point at least one of these figures? I don't know, maybe Orozco, his colors, or uh, if it if it matters to your to your work. And in the case of Jorge and Alejandro, how how important it it has been for your work, or just uh, or maybe it's just uh, some part or some project and. And it's at that moment when it, it is, it's important, but then no further along. So anyone who wants to start? Um, yeah, for, uh, for me, reading uh, Juan Rulfo's uh, couple of books uh, in, during teenage years was, um, was like, a, like a very well, like resume of what being Mexican was going to be like. So I, I think he, he read the region spectacularly and did so in a super synthetic way. And so it becomes part of, of, your, of your soul. And also, Barragan's architecture is, studying architecture, it's omnipresent and he's like the god, you know, and he has many children which are following some of his footsteps. So there are just these background figures. I, I didn't go into art until later in my life, so I missed a, a little bit of the influence of Diego Rivera and the muralists, including Orozco, and I went to different uh, fields of, of tradition, most like Western tradition, and I picked up later than the muralists. So they're important, but not like overshadowing figures. 
In my case, I don't think I have like a direct influence from them, but I, I was uh, somebody asked this question in an interview, and what I said is I think they are part of our imaginary. So any they are there anyway, and and that's from where we create. It's not a direct influence like, in my case, but but they are there, you know, like in the imaginary of, of being Mexican, of being from Guadalajara, etc. Uh, in my case, I, um, I think it's important to notice here that in my generation, some of the artists that are in the, included in the, in the show, come, we came from, from architectural background. So the, the, when we were in, the, in architecture school, the, the, the name of Aragon was uh, discussed a lot. We studied Aragon, so I think um, in a way, we are always we are, we are always influenced by by, by the, the architecture of Luis Barragan, and and then you decide after afterwards if you want to really base what you are doing in in in, in Barragan or 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 just just to make a a discussion with with the, with the influence, and but I think it's always there, even if you if it's in my case the the. The, the work is literally, it comes from Barragan, no? but, but it's for a special project only. And um, I think it's something that you have to, to with time, you learn to, to live with, no? with the influence of, of in, in the case, with Barragan. Yeah, for me, for the piece of the cactus, uh, yeah, what, what it was a commission almost for a, a show of Juan Rulfo's uh, photos that he, ha he happened to be an amazing photographer, and it was just photos of the country, you know, the country feel that kind of, so it had that kind of really same aesthetics as, the, as, the, as his, his writing, you know. So for me, it was a great experience to do this piece because I don't usually work on on certain team or person. It was kind of great to, to really go, go back to read the book again and go see the, the pictures and just experience. And I, actually, I went to outside Jalisco to just to see the these landscapes he describes. You know? So it was kind of great to kind of just go back and think about him. You know? So it was pretty interesting to to do that. Mm. Yeah, I think I am more on Cecil side. Like you recognize all these figu figures, you read them, you in their work and uh, you appreciate it but I don't feel like my work is related like I mean my if you might read something to that like you can do that but I think I even try to like just not be there I'm more influenced by, um, by other women artists and like my friends and um, yes but I mean I love their, their, their thing, you know, I, I enjoy that uh, part of Guadalajara a lot. It's interesting, well, at least in this table, that the two, the two women here that do not have this male influence. And I was thinking about Maria Izquierdo, that she's from, from Jalisco, but she, we don't feel her weight so much, no? maybe because she hasn't been so studied or... And she, um, she was appointed to represent Me Mexico in one World Fair or something like that. And then Diego Rivera and Orozco and Siqueiros, and t they say, no, o sea, absolutely not. A woman, she cannot, she's not, she doesn't have the level, no? So, okay. <laughs> yes, Isa? Uh, thank you very much. If you don't have anything else to say, I ah, know that we should pass the, the mic. Yeah, we should pass it. Yeah, do we have any questions? Okay. I could have asked that directly, but I've always been very curious with Jorge, with how do you select like the, the pieces of literature that you include in your work, or in this case, why is Emily Dickinson related to that piece? Um, as, as Isa said, you have obsessions that that, that you can, you cannot escape from, and always I, I try to be very careful with the with the choose of the of the reference that I use in this case the writer, 
and and for me it's been a, like a, a long dialogue with with Emily Dickinson and, and her poetry, and uh, which I use as reference in, in in other works, not only this one. And um, yes, I I, I think um, in like in in my case that I use always so, some some reference uh, being being that a, a writer or an architect, I try to to not not grow my reference that much. Try to stay more or less in, in, in a small group of or 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 or, um, or similar reference during the year. No? So, so so to to make the work more precise. Another question. Okay, coming right over. We'll meet in the middle. Thank you. I have a follow-up question, Jorge. Did you? Uh, how did you discover the hyphenation patterns in Emily Dickinson's body of work that influenced a series of your paintings? The hyphens, the, the, dash, hyphens, the yes, dashes? The dashes and hyphens. Is, yeah. Um, first, I, I, when I visit the house, of the, her house in Amherst, uh, one of the, one of the, of the, um, of the um, persons that worked there, Make these remarks about about the importance of the use of hyphens in her poetry, which I found amazing, and 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 I also try to, try to. Uh, uh, it's important to if you use I think if you are talking with a very classical reference, uh, I think as an artist you can you have to add something, and 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 sometimes it's better to look at the margins of things in this. And in this case, um, um, for me, it was the hyphens, no? The, this, 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 this um, way of writing uh, in which uh, almost uh, the, the, the reader becomes like like the one that is finishing the lines, for example, no? Because it's very different to finish a, a line with a point than to finish it with a, with a hyphen. So I, I, I really like that, and I'm began working with that. Thank you. I have a textual follow-up question. Jorge just said that he really limits his sets of influences or the inspirations for his works to a, a small group of writers that begin in, in the modern period and come to the contemporary period. Uh, but Octavio, you're all over the place. You've got ancient Greece, golden age ancient Greece, Plato, you've got Carl Sagan, you've got found text, you've got uh, contemporary references. So. Uh, similar questions, how do you select the vast array of texts that you appropriate or leverage for your, your works? Um, in, in this case, for the, for the utopian piece, uh, I had to go all over the place because I didn't want it to be like westernly oriented, although it is very westernly oriented. Uh, because there, there, there have been very few examples in China, for example, or in India there's a couple of them. Uh, but it's most of a Western idea, and it has been since Greek. So whenever the works, the work calls for, for that distance or that depth into many different things, the work itself sets like the limits, and that's uh, why it's so like all, all over the place. In terms of painting, the only thing that really interests me is minimalism and their response towards the world. Which, it was art made in the 60s and 70s, which, for my, in my opinion, it, it, sp it speaks of a silence from the artists, and I think we, I cannot do that anymore, so that's like the response. Uh, yeah. Okay, I have a question. Um, I'm curious about uh, Guadalajara specifically, and you know, cities change, right? Um, in general, like the city that we were born into uh, is not the same city that we experience when we're 20, when we're 30, when we're 40. Um, and so I'm thinking about like Oklahoma City, right? As it changes, as the city changes, has your work changed with the city in any way? Has that impacted your work in any way? Well. Me, for example, I lived for six or seven years, not in Guadalajara. So, uh, and I was living like nearby um, nature. So I started this relationship with nature, like being in the mountain. 
Um, I mean, it's not like a forest mountain, it's like more de desert mountain. And then I moved to Guadalajara, so um, in order to develop this relationship with nature, like I appeal to the streets. So yeah, it did change uh, like from working directly with organic materials to started like painting. Yeah, like it's also like easier. It was easier for me like to be in my house with the canvas and um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think I cannot say uh, like specifically the city, um, but yeah, yeah, like changing cities did change my work. In my case, I left Guadalajara like 10 years ago and moved to a bigger city, to Mexico City. And I've been looking Guadalajara since that place. But now it's funny because it's almost the opposite. I'm, I'm getting back to Guadalajara to work in a ranch, to work in nature. So I'm living in a big city and, and I'm, I'm getting back there like to start uh, having my studio in, in the in the outside and to work with nature. So, yeah, it, I mean, it's strange because I'm, 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 I'm getting back to Guadalajara, but to the natural part, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, then I think we're good. We're gonna thank you so much to the artists for this panel. Thank you. Thank you.